to bring a message of hope for 2021. Last year, a lot of us felt disappointment, which is the opposite of hope. But this year, I want to talk about hope, not in the circumstances, but in something much greater than that. So I was reading a magazine in the holidays and an article was there that said lockdown made me do. And then it listed a few things. Someone wrote a novel, someone got engaged, someone finally dealt with their depression. But I wanted to issue a challenge of lockdown made me do to our school community and anyone listening today. And the challenge is this, lockdown made me interactively know God. It made me trust him here and now. In other words, lockdown made me real with God. That type of interactive knowing God enlarges our hope and enlarged hope gives us emotional energy to face the present situation. So that is my challenge, being real with God for 2020. There was a man called Viktor Frankl, who was a Jewish psychiatrist in the concentration camps in World War II. He was in Auschwitz and he said prisoners lost courage and disappointment overcame them. And this had a dangerous influence on their powers of resistance and a great number of them died. So there's a link between being disappointment, disappointed and losing hope and getting weaker, it steals our life. He said we had to learn and teach despairing men that it didn't matter what we expected from life, but rather what life expected from us. What does life expect from you? What does God expect from you? Do you know? There's a quote by John Mark Comer that says, disappointment is a signal in our bodies that we have put our hope in the wrong things. When we feel that feeling of disappointment, we must ask ourselves, where did I put my hope? It was the wrong place to put it. It didn't come through for me. So some of us put that hope in riches or upward mobility. And we think we'll get more and more as each year goes by. But this year, as we've certainly seen economic repercussions for every business and everyone. So that it's not a certain thing to put your trust in. Some people put their trust in themselves, their own good works, um, secular humanism and altruism, doing good. But we still have gender-based violence. We still have racism in every country. And we still have slavery. Do you know that? There's about 30 million slaves today, and it's mainly women and children. So we cannot save ourselves. We cannot change people's hearts ourselves, but Jesus can. The third thing we put our hope in is things like people or government policy or vaccines, which may or may not be certain things to put your hope in. People always will eventually let us down because they're human and they're broken and circumstances change. It's not a reliable thing to put your hope in people or things. That means the expectation of coming good based on the person and promises of God. His nature is sure and his promises always come through. This is my verse for today. It's talking about putting our hope in the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope, or God, hope in God, does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. In other words, we're putting our hope, even when we're suffering, we're putting our hope 
in, the, in God, in his love and in his goodness to us. Let me tell you why we put, can put our hope in God. Firstly, the certainty of his nature. God is first described as a God of compassion in Exodus 34. He is a compassionate and gracious God. He is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. He punishes rebellion, wickedness and sin. Thank goodness he does that. We can't handle that stuff. So he's someone who's just, totally just, because he knows all the facts. Never mind the fact he never lies. He's omnipresent and omnipowerful. We can trust that type of nature. He's slow to anger, not like people. So we can be certain to put our hope in that unchanging nature. The second thing to put our hope in is the, is the certainty of his purpose. His purpose is to overcome evil and sin and suffering with good. He began a great work on that cross where Jesus died to defeat evil and sin and suffering. And from now on, we participate with God in that mission of overcoming evil with good. And God wants to use you in your life, in your circumstances, in this time to overcome evil with good. Thirdly, there's a certainty of his love. There's biblical promises that say nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not angels or demons or darkness or light or trials or temptations or suffering. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. God is love. Love means we extend ourselves for the good of another. Love is not just a cushy feeling. It's more than that. It's an action. We extend ourselves for the good of another human being. It involves a type of suffering, but that is God's highest ethic, and he wants you to become people of love. God will use suffering to form us into people of love. And here's a promise. Jesus has promised to be with us in suffering. You know the great... Um, preacher John Wesley a few centuries ago saw amazing power in his preaching. He saw people healed. He saw miracles. But when he was dying on his deathbed, even though he'd seen all these things, he said, best of all, God is with me right here, right now. And that is God's promise to us. Life is full of the goodness of God. We just have to pay attention and look for it. There's a wonderful poem by Sidney Lanier that goes like this. As the marsh hen secretly builds on the watery sod, behold, I will build me a nest on the greatness of God. Where are you building your nest? You can't build it on circumstances. A more certain place to build your nest is on God, his words, and his promises. So how are we going to enlarge our hope so that we get emotional energy for the present? I'm going to suggest three things. Firstly, don't be tempted to believe anything bad about God. He didn't do it. God does not will any bad into your life. There is a world of evil and suffering so that we can choose freely to love God in it and allow him to make us into people of character. But don't be tempted to misuse his name and attribute evil and sin to him. That's not who he is. Secondly, make time to receive his love. If we're always rushing about tight-hearted and busy, we're not going to receive his love. We need to have time to open and receive his love so that we can give it to others. That is a spiritual discipline of sitting in his presence and receiving from him. And thirdly, pray. Now, pray is not just jargon or using special liturgy or words. Prayer is talking to God about what you and he are doing together right now. So start talking to God. Be real with him. Take off the masks. 
and tell him how you really, really feel. He can cope with your sadness. He can cope with your anger. And as you pray, you will develop patience in waiting as he brings good into your life. And that will give you emotional energy for the present. So now I'm going to close with this blessing. Just take a nice deep breath in and release any fear or apprehension. And again, deep breath in and release any worries or anxieties. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.